Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to provide some examples of how to calculate the moment of inertia of a system of masses. So what we're looking at here, I've got these four masses in this picture, and we're going to assume for this example they, that they all have the same mass. I'm just going to call that mass M. So we got M, 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 and M. And we're going to imagine that these are connected uh, by these rigid poles that are very light and not significant for the problem. And we're going to imagine that the distance basically center to center here, I'm going to call L and this width W. And I've put a coordinate system right in the center. So imagine this coordinate system here right in the center of these four masses. We've got the x-axis to the right, y-axis up, z-axis uh, basically coming at us. And we're going to calculate three different moment of inertias for this system. We're going to calculate the moment of inertia of this system about the x-axis, the moment of inertia about the y-axis, and the moment of inertia about the z-axis. So let's uh, take them one at a time. So moment of inertia about the x-axis, ix. So hopefully you've seen my video on how to calculate moment of inertias. I'm going to go ahead and just write this down here. The moment of inertia of a system of masses is the sum of all the mr squareds over all those masses. So we're just going to take these one at a time, starting with this upper right corner. So imagine this entire system free to rotate about the x-axis. So imagine it free to rotate about this axis right here, just like so. The distance from this mass to the x-axis is half of this value that I call W. So the moment of inertia of this object about this axis is going to be its mass times W over 2 squared. That's the MR squared. So the R again would be the distance from this mass to that x-axis. I think what I'm going to do here is just kind of shorthand the rest of this. If you inspect this, the distance from this mass to the x-axis is the same. So that would add another term here. Distance for this mass to the x-axis, same. That would add another one, a third one of these terms. And same thing for this guy. The distance from, from this mass to that x-axis is the same. So rather than write out plus mw over 2 squared plus mw over 2 squared, etc., I'm just going to multiply this whole thing by 4. So we'll end up with, to simplify it down a little bit, let's see, 4 over 2 squared. I guess that would be 1. We'll just end up with mw squared for ix. Let's take a look at the y-axis. So now you have to imagine this entire system free to rotate about the y-axis, maybe something like this. Starting again with this upper right-hand corner. The distance from this mass to the y-axis is this distance here, which is basically half the length. So the moment of inertia of this mass about the y-axis is m times L over 2 squared. Again, that's m r squared. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Those distances are all the same. So rather than write out four of these terms, I'm just going to multiply this by four again. And now we got ml squared because this one half squared is one fourth, and that's just going to cancel this. Let's do iz. Moment of inertia of the system about the z-axis. So now, again, you have to imagine this entire system free to rotate about this axis. The distance we need, right, again, starting with this mass, is the distance from this mass to the z-axis. And keep in mind that we don't really need that distance. We need the distance squared. So... I'm going to put some distances in here. This green distance is L over 2. I'll use the same color. This distance is W over 2. The one we need to calculate IZ, I'm going to put that in red, is this distance squared. 
And by Pythagorean theorem, that distance squared is equal to L over 2 squared plus W over 2 squared. So the moment of inertia of this mass about the z-axis is equal to m times r squared. And I think I'll just write that, uh, how about l squared over 4 plus w squared over 4 by time we square these. Now, this was for just one single mass, but if you look at the symmetry of this problem, this distance in red is the same as this one this one and this one so just like before rather than doing a lot of writing i am just going to take oops take this entire term and multiply it by four so what we get out of that by time we multiply this four out we're going to get m times the quantity l squared plus w squared for iz now if you kind of inspect these moment of inertias um, mw squared, ml squared, and m times l squared plus w squared. This one is the largest of the three. And the reason is because moment of inertia is very sensitive to distance, right? Look at how it's calculated, mr squared. The further the mass is from the axis of rotation, the higher the moment of inertia. And of the distances we've talked about, this guy, this guy, and this guy, this one in red is the largest. That's why the moment of inertia about the z-axis is larger than the other two. So I hope this video helps demonstrate how to calculate the moment of inertia for a system of masses. Have a great day.